Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's mid-February 2021 and a new version of the community free A4E Skyhawk is out. It's version 2.0.0. There are some big changes. In this video, we are going to look at 1. How to download. 2. How to install correctly so that it works properly. 3. How to set it up. 4. We're going to come back and look at the changes in this version. And finally, we'll have a flight. So we will look firstly at the external flight model, then carrier operations, super carrier and legacy carrier, then how the new radio works. Then we'll do some air to air refueling. And I think that will be enough for this video. Please find in the video description of the video you're watching now this link to this page where I'm at here. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to check its community 2.0.0 and it is beta.zip. Click on that and download it. Once it's downloaded, go to your downloads folder, double click in here. If you want, there are instructions of how to install it and changes of this version, but we're going to go through that pretty much all now. Anyway, we're going to go in mods, we're going to go in aircraft, we're going to right click copy on the A4EC. Now, before we paste it anywhere, there are some special things we need to do. First of all, we need to clear out our old version. So C drive, assuming this is where your saved games folder is, and it probably will be very similar to this users your particular user saved games dcs or dcs open beta depending on which version you're working on i'm working on open beta now the first thing we need to do is delete any old input files that we may have especially if we had a previous version of this aircraft otherwise it will mess it up so into config into input and once we're here delete that folder and then we're going to go back out to DCS or DCS open beta. Then we're going to go to mods if you don't have that folder, create it exactly as I've shown there. Into aircraft if you don't have that folder, delete it, create it exactly as I've got there. If you've got an old version of the A4 in, make sure you delete it again, otherwise it won't install properly. Right click paste, and give it a little while to copy in, and we're in and installed. Let's go and fire up DCS. I have current open beta February 2021. On our main screen, if it's installed correctly, you should see the A4EC200 beta 1 sign down here somewhere. First thing we're going to do is set our special options. So, options cogwheel here, special, scroll down and find A4E. Do we want to bypass the catapult alignment check? This is what checks that the aircraft is lined up correctly with the catapult before it hooks it up. And I've got the bypass on. Next, how do we want to actually do the launch? Do you want it? So you just need to go to mill power and then the catapult will automatically launch. Or do you want it so that you have to actually do the salute command? Trim speed, how fast do you want the trim to activate when you push the binary buttons? Do you want the experimental beta version of the external flight model for this aircraft, which is the main thing that's special with this version, or do you want the old standard flight model? And how much do you want the cockpit to shake during high G loadings and high alpha turns and stuff like that? And you can change that, and I'm gonna leave mine at 100%. Let's go okay to that, back into options, controls select the a4e here and set your controls up i've got a full seven minute video showing you how to do that and i will link that in the video description on to the features of this version the biggest one is is that they've added the beta early version of the efm it means an external flight model so previous to this the a4 had what we call an sfm standard flight model some people call it a simple flight model it means a very low complexity model with basically just a few values in lookup tables that the aircraft will get on the fly to figure out how much drag it would have at certain angles of attack and stuff like that you would know when you're flying an sfm model because it just wouldn't feel right in a cockpit you can't feel the weight very well and especially when when you get on the ground and interact with the ground you can't for instance tip the aircraft over and it doesn't move right on the ground we now have an efm external flight model this is the type of flight model that you will have in all of your professional third party modules like harrier f14 tomcat mirage and so on it has the possibility of being as good as those due to the amount of inputs and parameters that they can have in the model. And in their list so far, they've got realistic flight dynamics, realistic suspension, differential brakes, that's a big change, nozzle steering, realistic engine simulation, realistic force-based slat simulation, so the slats will only come down at more realistic regimes, damage to engine and aerodynamic surfaces, cockpit shake effect, wing vapor effect, capability with the regular carrier, carrier hookup, key bind, ship takeoff position, basic compatibility with supercarrier, added salute option and added launch option in radio menus, sound, a whole bunch of sounds that they've added in. That's, that's one thing that was really missing as well as the flight model in the old one. The sounds were pretty tacky too and way too quiet. It was really nerdy. You know when you get a really nerdy plane and they have the sounds down really low so they don't offend anyone. 
I really hope they've juiced those up a bit and we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, Avionics, a CP741A bombing computer. I haven't tried that out, but I look forward to trying it. Your damper, this is to do with the new AFCS implementation. ILS navigation, I haven't tried that, but I look forward to it. An enabled radio and some basic support for force feedback joysticks. A couple of bits here have changed. Deprecated the standard fake afterburner i don't remember there being an afterburner but okay and everything on the special menu that's what we just looked like uh, except cockpit shake uh, i figured however i best leave that in there for now at least until they've removed it they've removed the standard flight model carrier launch mechanism they fixed a bunch of stuff here and there are a bunch of issues there if you want to go and read that so we've got a hot start on a super carrier a hot start on a legacy carrier and a hot start on a base let's jump in let's start with the super carrier i'm going to go to the communications menu and in case you are new it is that button there communications menu ground crew up here request launch there there will be no comms but it will actually work and roll forwards now press and hold those will steering keep it a little slow in fact the first thing i should do is test the ground this is one of the easiest ways to test if it's a standard flight model or not it's to try and tip it over and there we go it is a real model whoa hello <laughs> not quite working right maybe but um it does have quote unquote proper physics at least, as and you can tip it over. A bit disappointed about how quiet the engine is still. I've got my normal kind of mission sound levels on at the moment, where, you know, an F-16 or something would be, I don't know, twice as loud, 70% more loud, something like that. If I do this, I've got the individual wheel brakes set up, tow brakes, that all seem to work well. It seems to move around on the ground fine and, you know, relatively realistically as far as I would know. Okay, he's calling me forward. There's not really much I have to do. He's going to Make sure it's going to be automated. Wait for him to tell me to stop and stop. I'm going to go to external view. It's a bit glitchy at the moment. It doesn't match up properly, but it works okay. He's asking me to go forward again. Wheel brakes off. Power on. you just got to forge your way through it. More power, more power, more power. We'll get there in the end. Full power now. Power, on the power. There we go. I just had to do a bit of jiggling with the throttle to get that to work. It's a little bit fussy, but it works okay generally. He's asked me to put my launch bar up. I don't have one in this case, so I'm not going to do that. That's it, I'm ready to go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go full throttle and then I'm going to go into the communications menu, ground crew. I'm going to hit salute there. Salute, ping. Same on my memory way. Yes, please. Gear up. Whee! Oh, ho, 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 a bit closer than I liked. Okay, let's try uh, Legacy Carrier. We don't use uh, Legacy Carrier anymore in, in GR, so it seems really weird. Right, I'm going to park as near as I can to the steam lug. I'm going to have a guess there. Quick F2 check. I'm going to press the U uniform key to hook up. I have to be relatively close to the catapult. That's hooked me up. That's it. All I'm going to do now is go full power. And I will get launched. Zoom. Bit of aft sick and the need. Gear up. Okay, let's have a little flyabout for the first time. That banging appears to be the slats moving in and out, I think. So, slats in. Yes, it is. Slats out. They're a bit more dynamic than they used to be. They come out with more realistic loadings. And they go boom, boom, boom. So I wonder how they're operated. I'm going to guess hydraulically, but I'm just guessing. Forwards. That's quite cool. You hear them banging. You can also hear the beginnings of a proper flight model. You can hear when I'm aft sick and I'm putting the angle of attack on. You can feel the shaking in the cockpit if that's too much for you. Remember, you can go back and turn that down in the special options if you want while they are fine-tuning it in the background. Also, you've got that sound telling you at, that you are at high angle, angle of attack. So all the, all the basic stuff there is good. Uh, it's all a bit quiet for me, but it is all roughly in tune. The wind noise is about roughly right with the engine level, roughly right with the G sounds. Maybe, I just, maybe, maybe the engine needs to go up a bit, I think, actually. Otherwise, uh, that's all pretty cool. It's all right. It's all about conveying to the 
pilot, to the virtual pilot, that this is a real plane and that it feels like it's got weight, even though it hasn't because this isn't real, what we're doing here. It's about fooling them. And it's not that bad. It's no F-16. It's no F-14, but it's not that bad. I think it's, I think it's a, a, a pretty good effort. Roll. Roll's a bit weird in this plane, and don't ask me how realistic this is because I just don't know, but it's really fast rolling. Apparently it is the fastest rolling aircraft in the world. Um, I don't know why that is. I don't see anything reason that would make it that fast rolling, but apparently it is. I might even be able to knock myself, I can knock myself out due to the... I, well, the only slight annoying thing about that is that, yes, it's very fast, but it's very sensitive. So I've got a two-foot wing-wing stick here, and just the smallest touch on it will roll me over. So if I were going to fly this, the pitch is fine. The pitch is normal, feels like a normal plane. The roll is really sensitive. So if I were going to fly this, I would go and add some curve in the roll axis just to get me a bit more fine tuning because air to air refueling or anything like that is going to be really hard. I'm just going to quickly try some high G stuff. Okay, with 500 knots. Six G. Assume these guys have a G suit. Here's to be limited to six and a half G. No G fade effect. I guess that is the AFCS doing that, but again, just guessing. All round, it feels okay. I think the roll's a bit lively, but okay. Uh, let's go for a quick uh, landing, shall we? So we can now click on the ping stick like that. That's the uh, the hook. Flaps. I'm gonna bring down if I can remember where my button is. You've got the indicator there. Down they go. I can't remember how to land this at all, so we'll just give it a quick fudge, shall we? I'm going to guess about 140 knots, a bit less maybe. Gear down. My memory serves me correctly. This angle of attack indexer here is going to be what tells me if I'm the correct angle of attack and therefore the correct speed for my weight. And I want to keep it in the middle. I think it's saying I'm too fast at the moment, so let's slow down a bit. Under speed now, I'm going to turn in. Over speed now, going down to full flaps. Virtual balls come up. We've got the azimuth guidance laser on the back. On speed, under speed, power on. She's a bit erratic, but that's okay. Under speed, on speed, over speed. Come on. On radio at least. Okay, slightly over speeding, but I'm kind of happy with that because I can't see over the dash. Uh, on speed, under speed. And, oh god, that was actually really hard. <laughs> that is not like a hornet, that's really hard. It just likes to fall out of the sky and start shaking and you've got to get on the power quick. Quick look from the runway just to see how she feels. I think that banging is the uh, slat. See how she feels with rudder, with nose and steering. Whoa, oh, she's touchy, yowza. She really is touchy, right. Lesson learned, do not do nose wheel steering when taking off. Right, no nose wheel steering, just rudder and differential brakes. Listen for the ground rumble, let's just look for the vibration in the cockpit. Does it make you feel well you're on a real runway? It's okay, a little bit quiet for me, but okay. Steer fine with your differential brakes, a bit of rudder. Where's the speedo? There it is. Whoop. Up, gear up. Ridiculous roll rate, it's crazy. Could it really roll that fast at 200 knots? Who am I to judge? Next, radios. They've added a radio in. How they've done it, I don't know, but it's awesome. So, we've got our aircraft here in Mission Editor. We can tune the radio in manually, or we can do presets from the Mission Editor. And if we go radio presets here, you can choose all of these presets and you can operate them from the radio interface in the aircraft. Note that the radio works with easy communications turned off and on with easy communications turned on you don't need to tune the radio in it'll just magically do it itself with it turned off we'll do it realistically and that's how we'll go and do it here we'll be contacting this tanker i've just added in who is on 251 megahertz okay the tanker is just in front of us there let's go to our radio we can use our preset channels there if we want or we can manually tune that's manually tune so i want to go 251 master mode on transmit receive and that should be it Press radio push to talk. The top there, tanker, Texaco 1. 
Intend to refuel. One, one. Springfield, one, one. Request rejoin. Springfield, one, one. Lovely job. One, one. Proceed to pre-contact at 7,000 at 300. You told me at 7,000 feet, 300. Let's go and join up. Let's fall in formation. F1 for ready pre-contact. Ready pre-contact. Return pre-contact. Try that again. Ready pre-contact. There he is. Now this is going to be a little difficult because of that roll problem I mentioned earlier, but we're going to do our best. We've got quite a big stick, so we've got plenty of resolution. Uh, no buttons we need to press. We're ready to refuel. There is a binding in the adjust controls menu to allow you to change between refueling internal only, or we can re refuel exterior bags. Can we get this first time, boys? Highly unlikely. <laughs> That's what we call PIO, Pilot Induced Oscillation. Always happens when the Valley viewers are watching. Contact. Oh, got it! <laughs> Look at that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. I'm still trying to work out exactly where this probe is on my aircraft. Contact. Eee, gotcha! You're taking fuel. Contact. You're taking fuel. Uh, not the easiest thing to refuel, but good fun, good thing to practice. As well as that, millions of liveries supplied. Wow, look at that. Millions of liveries supplied. A standard, so download it, go and have fun. There are a load, bunch more of other stuff I'm going to show, but I think I'm going to put them back to other videos because this video is going to be long enough already. I hope that was useful and see you later.